Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at E-Trailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt Class 2 trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Honda Odyssey. Now this is what your hitch is going to look like when installed on your Odyssey and this is an exposed cross tube meaning you're going to see a good portion of the hitch underneath your vehicle um, but you do gain definitely the use of a hitch so overall it kind of comes down to the aesthetic look that you're looking for. There's other ones out there that you can get a hidden cross tube but this installation is significantly easier. And this one is an inch and a quarter inch receiver tube opening, which means that you're gonna be a little bit limited when it comes to bike racks, cargo carriers, or ball mounts, uh, as it, the standard is generally a two inch, um, but not to worry, I have one of these on my vehicle and it allows me to still utilize the hitch quite well. All of your accessories are gonna stay in place with a half inch pin and clip. This is not included with the hitch. A lot of times when picking up accessories, they'll come with one, but if you wanna leave your accessories on the back of your van, I highly recommend getting a locking pin and clip. That way you can leave them on there. No one's gonna be able to just walk away with those accessories. And we have plenty of options available here at E-Trailer. Your plate style safety chain loops come in play when hooking up your safety chains. So your standard S hook goes on just fine. Even a larger clevis style is gonna go on here. And speaking of towing, uh, you're gonna want to adhere to the weight capacities of the hitch as well as the vehicle. So check the vehicle's owner's manual and you're gonna wanna compare what it can tow with what the hitch will. Uh, this one in particular, gross trailer weight rating comes in at 3,500 pounds, which is the weight of the trailer plus the accessories loaded onto it. You also have a tongue weight rating of 350 pounds and that's gonna be the pressure that's kind of put on the inside of the receiver tube opening. So a lot of your suspended accessories fall into that. So your bike racks and cargo carriers uh, and with an inch and quarter, a lot of times it's hard to find a four bike bike rack. Um, so you'll be able to load those up, your cargo carrier, you can get that loaded up with 350 pounds. So it's definitely gonna add usability to your van. Some of your accessories will stow in a vertical position and you wanna make sure it's not gonna make contact with your rear fascia from center of hitch pin hole to the furthest point of the rear fascia it comes in at about two and a quarter. So I really don't worry too much that when you have your bike rack or car carrier stowed up that it's gonna make contact with your rear fascia. But keep in mind, you're more than likely not gonna be able to open up the rear hatch of your van while those are in that stowed position. Ground clearance from the top of the receiver tube opening to the ground comes in right at about 13 inches. And that's actually pretty good for a van. Uh, that's really coming into play when choosing a ball mount. You wanna measure the coupler of your trailer and then take that measurement and compare. That way you can determine the rise or drop necessary for the trailer you'll be hooking up to. Something else to keep in mind is with that ground clearance, some of your accessories may sit a little bit lower and as you go up an incline, those are gonna wanna tilt towards the ground before the vehicle. Uh, so just again, while driving around with those accessories loaded up, if you're going up a steep incline or any rocky or rough terrain, uh, you wanna make sure you don't damage your accessories. Now, as far as installation goes, this one is really easy. We're gonna fish wire up some hardware that's in an access hole on the frame already, and then we're gonna be using weld nuts to hold the hitch up. Um, now, to gain access to those, you gotta remove some plastic panels, but it's really simple to do. You can definitely do this in your driveway or garage. I would say uh, probably under an hour. Uh, you might wanna grab an extra set of hands to raise the hitch up, but either way, I'll walk you through all the steps to make sure you get yours installed. So let's take a look. Begin our installation, we need to remove a few panels that's going to give us access to the frame rail where we're going to be bolting up our hitch. And the first one we'll remove is on the passenger side right by the exhaust tip. So make sure you didn't just get done driving your vehicle. And this is uh, just an exhaust deflector, which is two uh, plastic push pins. And this is pretty easy to remove. You're just going to pry on the center section. Now I have a, a trim panel tool here, which is really helpful, but if not, a flathead screwdriver is gonna work fine here. Um, so just pry out that center. The Honda plastic push pins are pretty tough here, so if you can, kind of get underneath it and get the center section to pop out, and then the whole thing should come out fairly easily. So with that, you can see I got this whole one to pop out. I'll just get this one taken off as well. And if you do break these, don't be surprised. That's okay, you can pick these up fairly easily. Uh, we actually have performance tools replacements if you need, um, but just take your time here. And we'll set our deflector aside. And then on our driver's side, there's gonna be those plastic push pins. We have three of them here. There's also gonna be some other hardware, but for now we're just gonna get these removed. 
Now with the plastic push pins, there's one that goes into this small mud flap. That's not attached to this panel. Um, so you can leave that one there. There is a 10 millimeter uh, bolt that's attached. So we'll get this removed. And then there's also a Phillips head screw um, that's attaching kind of this under or the wheel well liner. Um, so we need to get this removed and it's, it's kind of tight here. You might want a stubby Phillips to get this removed. And I recommend holding onto your hardware uh, in a nice organized spot. It's gonna make reinstallation of everything a lot easier. Now this panel, you can choose to reinstall or not. Um, if you are gonna reinstall it, you are gonna need to do some trimming that's involved. Um, so that's really up to you and if you really need this put back up. Now that deflector is going to go back on uh, if you do plan on trimming it after the hitch is up. So we'll move along with getting our hardware installed. Uh, we're going to be using a reverse fish wire technique. So grab the fish wire as well as your carriage bolt and a spacer block. And if you've never done this before, it can look a little overwhelming, but this is actually pretty easy to do. Um, so take your coiled end and just kind of hold on to your wire here. Take your spacer block, slide it on there, and then you can thread on your carriage bolt. And then it, you'll find that we have this access hole here that's going to allow you to slide the carriage bolt up, the spacer block, and then as we pull this down, that creates a mounting point for our hitch. Now, I would highly recommend leaving the fish wire on, and if you need to, you can put a slight bend on here, and that's gonna help us kind of feed this onto the hitch and keep it in place. Um, but at this point, we'll just repeat that same process on the other access hole. Now, on the passenger side, the exhaust might give you a little bit of clearance issues as far as making it easy to get this in place. Um, I don't think you have to lower down your exhaust uh, to get everything in place. You should be able to slide the hitch up, but if you want a little bit more room to work, you'll have an isolator here. There's also one on the subframe. I just recommend supporting the exhaust. There's a hanger later down, but uh, you don't want this just kind of hanging down too much and putting stress on it, but you would just take a pry bar and pry this off. If you need to, you can put a little soapy water to help that along. But again, I don't think it's completely necessary. want to prep your other hardware that way when you raise your hitch up you can kind of get it started to hold the hitch in place so we have four bolts these are going to go into the weld nuts that are on the frame rail and these are going to have a conical tooth washer there's little teeth on here you're going to want that to bite into the metal of the hitch so what i recommend doing before raising the hitch up just take your bolt and run it through the weld nuts um, so just right here i can see it's it's binding up a little bit so just make sure it's, it's perpendicular with it, but you might wanna take a socket and run these through. It's gonna make it a lot easier for when you raise the hitch to kind of get these started. Um, so as you can see, that's about as far as I can get. So I'm gonna take my socket, run these up on all four of them, and that way they're gonna go in nice and easy for us. An extra set of hands. I got Ryan helping me here. Uh, what we're going to do is raise our hitch in position. So take that fish wire and that's going to go through the furthest forward hole. So that's where that bend comes into play. Once you kind of snap that in, it's going to kind of keep it in place. And we're going to pull that up as we guide it, but also have at least one uh, bolt and conical tooth washer set up on both sides. That way we can just kind of get a thread started. So as you raise this up, make sure that that um, stud goes through and then from here just a few threads on each side it's going to hold up our hitch and we can go ahead and get the rest of the bolts in place now we need to thread our serrated flange nuts onto our carriage bolts that we pass through if you need a little bit of extra um, thread to be able to kind of uh, get these started. You can draw these up a little bit using that 19 millimeter socket and that's going to give you a little bit more threads to play with. Um, now is get your fish wire pulled off but you want to make sure you don't push this back into the frame rail. So uh, you can use the hitch sometimes to kind of 
push against the stud and that'll help. You can use your finger to kind of get this started. Another option, if you're struggling, you can take your fish wire and just kind of pull that against those threads. That'll hold it in place enough for you to get this started. And then we'll go ahead and repeat on the other side. So now we'll get these all snug down. We're gonna be coming back with a torque wrench to torque them down properly. So you don't need to get crazy here. Uh, just make sure that the hitch is drawn up against the frame rail. Um, so with our 19s, I'll go ahead and snug this down first. And on our carriage bolt, I recommend threading this up as much as you can. Pulling pressure down to where that carriage bolt doesn't spin is gonna be key. Um, but once that's snug, that's gonna keep the carriage bolt in that spacer block. And then to snug this down, it's gonna be an 11 16 socket. Now with this one, I'm just using a long extension uh, and you have enough wiggle room to push this exhaust aside to get this tightened up. Now with everything snugged up, we'll just bring our torque wrench back to it using those same sockets. And the torque settings are found in the instruction manual. Keep in mind that the hardware does change obviously from our carriage bolts to the ones that go in our weld nuts. So make sure you're changing your torque setting accordingly. Now, as far as the torque wrench, if you don't have one, we have them available here at eTrailer. You can generally go to an auto parts store and rent one for free. And this is gonna be important. It's gonna make sure that, especially on weld nuts, that it's gonna be tight enough for the lifespan of the hitch, but also it's not gonna be too tight putting stress on that hardware long-term. Now we'll just go through and torque down the rest of the hardware. At this point, we can get our exhaust deflector put back in place. If you want this back up, it's not far off from going back in place. Uh, you might run into a little bit of issue as it kind of rubs against the hitch here of getting everything aligned. So if you need to, uh, I would just kind of hold it up and then just make a quick mark of where the hitch sits. And you have this little portion here that you can trim out and you can get it as clean as you want. You can use a Dremel, you can use a pair of snips, uh, oscillating tool, whatever you may have. And that way you can get this put back up. But again, not completely necessary, it's up to you. And that was a look at installation of the Curt Class 2 trailer hitch receiver on a 2023 Honda Odyssey.